On this day five years ago, we became familiar with the term derecha, which is Spanish for direct or straight ahead. That term was used to describe a line of storms that brought damaging straight line winds to our area. Meteorologist Rob Blydick is here now to revisit that storm five years later. So what caused it all to happen? Well, the spring of 2012 was one of the warmest and driest on record. And with a setup like that, Lake Michigan actually played a key role. Take a look. First thing I thought was this is probably the worst thunderstorm I've ever seen. And I got blown off my porch uh, about six feet into my yard. For many, June 29th, 2012 is a day they'll never forget. And so it began as the remnants of a cluster of thunderstorms over northern Illinois early that morning and was able to further develop and intensify along a stationary boundary that was right over our area. You may be surprised to know that Lake Michigan had an influence on intensifying these storms. The cooler air over lake waters rushed inland, or what is known as a lake breeze. That caused warm, unstable air to rapidly rise. On this particular day, the instability was extreme. Storms quickly strengthened and formed a line of intense winds in northwest Indiana by around 1.30 p.m. Racing southeast at speeds of 50 to even 65 miles per hour, the National Weather Service began to quickly issue warnings for winds. The velocity tools on radar began detecting widespread wind gusts of over 60 miles per hour. In Whitley County, there were 80 to 100 foot power line poles that were taken down from this storm. Around 2.50 that afternoon, Fort Wayne International Airport reported a 91 mile per hour wind gust. That's the equivalent of an EF-1 tornado and the strongest wind gust reported throughout the entire duration of this storm. The storms raced southeast through Van Wert and all the way to the eastern seaboard, leaving a path of destruction more than 600 miles long. The actual occurrence of a derecho is not necessarily that uncommon. For one so long lived as this particular event was is very unusual that it could develop over the Midwest carry through the Appalachian Mountains and make it all the way to the eastern seaboard. Its ability to maintain itself was fascinating. As if the aftermath of the derecho itself wasn't enough, it occurred during one of the hottest stretches on record in Fort Wayne. After the storm with over 80,000 people in the Fort Wayne viewing area without power and without power and in that middle of that heat wave made for a bad combination. From June 27th all the way through July 18th, or 22 days in total, we had temperatures of 90 degrees or above. That's the longest consecutive stretch of 90 or higher in Fort Wayne. And that stretch included four days in a row of temperatures over 100. Happened to be the hottest week of the year. It was 105 degrees, and I think the, the house wound up at about 89 degrees inside. Yeah, it was cooler outside than it was inside. With several days of no power, and in some cases, no water, it was difficult for people to keep cool in the summer heat. Cooling centers opened up throughout the area, and some businesses gave out free ice. All told, from just south of Chicago all the way to the mid-Atlantic coast, the derecho was responsible for 22 deaths and close to $3 billion in damage. Four to five billion people lost power in total. It was, of course, an incredible storm and a very tough one to forecast. Tonight at 6, meteorologist Hannah Strong will talk to some of the people who were impacted by the derecho here.